There are two forms of Hess's law, one of which is relatively easy to recognize because you're given the component reactions that you have to rearrange and manipulate. And the other one, we get to use more of an algebraic form, in which case we get to use the heats of formation from our data table in order to calculate the energy of any reaction that we are given. So, in this question, okay, we're just given the balanced reaction. Sometimes it's given to you like this, sometimes you have to balance it out, so be careful there because the balancing is key in this type of question. So in this case, all we are looking for, we want to know what the overall enthalpy change is of this reaction. Now, we're not given anything. Okay, so if you are not given anything, then you have to do this form of Hess's Law, which essentially states that the sum of the heats of formation of your products subtract the sum of the heats of formation of your reactants give you the overall net energy change, net enthalpy change of the system. Okay, so, and you can, that, that's an ugly looking formula, I'll give you that. Okay. You can simplify some of the products minus some of the reactants. We'll know what you mean. So with Hess's Law, regardless of the type you are working with, it always ends up in kilojoules. Okay, so please be careful with that. Okay, so you have to make sure you identify whether you're looking for kilojoules in the end or kilojoules per mole in the end. Or kilojoules is for the entire reaction, kilojoules per mole is for one specific substance. In this case, we're looking for the entire reaction's energy. So, how's this going to look? So, first off, be very careful with your signs. Okay, leave all your negatives and positives in and watch your brackets. This is purely math. So let's start plugging in some numbers. Now all these numbers are directly from your data booklets. You can see questions where the actual example itself will give you some of these numbers, but typically they're going to be in your data booklet. Okay, and notice I'm putting in all of my units making sure you cancel everything out as you go. You know, with combustion reactions, you may or, not, may or not be told that the H2O will be in gas or liquid form. We will assume it's in liquid, or sorry, in steam if it's an open system. If it's closed, controlled, it will likely be in water, but oftentimes when it is water, you're told unless it's in cellular respiration or photosynthesis, in which case you are expected to know that. Okay, so we have my products up here and we have all of the reactants down here. Um, first thing, notice it's kind of long, so give yourself some space. Secondly, notice I don't have any oxygen. Oxygen isn't represented in any of the numbers I wrote out. Pure elements have no heat of formation for our purposes. Okay, formation refers to the energy involved when a compound is formed from its elements. In this case, it's a pure element, so for chem 30, pure elements will have a heat of formation of zero. So that's why you won't see them. Okay, so we do our math. And this works out to be negative 1, 2, 3, 4, point 8 kilojoules. Okay, that's the overall enthalpy of this reaction. And for this example, we are done. Now from there, you could have also calculated the molar enthalpy of any of the substances within that combustion of ethanol by dividing by one, or dividing by three, or dividing by two, or dividing by three again for steam. Okay, it, it, each question can be different, so you must be very careful understanding what you are being asked of.